Hey, Rosebank Union Church. I'm just checking in with you midweek, see how you're doing. Uh, at this point, we're almost four weeks into lockdown, and yeah, it's uh, starting to feel a little bit long, isn't it? So I just wanted to bring you some encouragement this morning from a passage of Scripture that has really helped me in a variety of, of difficult circumstances. So First Peter chapter 5, verse 10 says this, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I just think that's one of those passages that you could copy out and kind of stick on your mirror, your cupboard door, somewhere where you see it every day, because it covers such a wide variety of the difficult circumstances that we face in the Christian life. And you only have to read through First Peter to see that, to see the various forms of suffering that will come our way as disciples of Jesus. So Peter lists suffering that comes through persecution, uh, suffering that comes through simply being obedient and living life the kind of way that God has um, given us to live and the suffering and opposition that comes from that. He lists the opposition that comes from the devil. He even lists suffering that comes through trials that God specifically leads us through. But then right at the end of the book, after so much discussion of suffering, he says, and after you have suffered. And I just love that there is an after you have suffered, that it will end. But I love those next few words. After you have suffered a little while, you just got to kind of smile at that because, I mean, for, for some of you, it may have felt like a season of prolonged suffering. And I think it's deliberately vague here. See, Peter goes on to describe this eternal glory that we all have. So, hey, even if your suffering is extended on earth, it will end and there's this eternal glory. To look forward to, which is amazing. But he doesn't rule out the possibility of immediate relief from suffering. Because he says, God himself will restore, confirm, and establish you. And I've got a smile about that. And I just kind of love how the Bible always keeps these two uh, perspectives of relief from suffering in tension. So on the one hand, there is the knowledge that no matter what we're going through, no matter how long, in Jesus is is the definitive hope of eternal glory. And that kind of anchors us and guides us. But at the same time, the possibility of temporary relief. And I think the Bible does this deliberately. And that is in order to keep us prayerfully engaged in the present. So praying like it can help and it will help, but at the same time, never removing us from the eternal perspective and the hope that we have in Jesus. So I love that after you have suffered a little while, uh, God will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And I love those four words. I once did a deep dive on them. Restore, confirm, strengthen, establish. Do, what do they mean? Four different things. Find out they're actually kind of similar words. They mean a, a similar thing. And the idea here is something like, um, you know, if I went to watch a movie and I was raving about it, you asked me, hey, how was the movie? And I go, it was amazing, magnificent, splendid best movie I've ever seen, I'm using four different words or expressions, but really I'm saying the same thing. And ultimately, it's because I'm getting carried away at how excited I am about the movie. And you, and you get it. You're like, okay, we get it. You love that, that movie. And that's kind of what's happening here is it's four different words, but it's Peter getting carried away at just this, this kind of idea of what God will do and what he is doing in you through the suffering and basically saying this, that no matter how long the suffering is, we will come out of it on the other side, stronger. That's what it's saying. And I think as a church, just to, to see once again that in this unique season, as we're lifting our sail and truly believing that God is filling that sail, and we're going to come out of this stronger as a church. But it's not just for the church, eh? This is for you too. This is for you. God is doing something. And if we believe this scripture, Whatever this suffering is, well, we're all in a similar kind. We will come out stronger in some way. And so that's to say, I want to I just make a request and say, hey, if there's something that God is doing 
in your life, in specifically during lockdown, uh, a story you have to share, a testimony of God's grace. We would love to hear some of those stories. And so we want to invite you to share those stories. You can just send them to stories at ruc.org.za. We just love to be gathering them and sharing some of them with the church community. But hey, that's all. Uh, until we see each other again uh, tonight, the prayer meeting, I would love for us to hit 100 people in that prayer meeting. So I made some promises to the guys who were online last week, which I won't repeat here, but let's have 100 people on the prayer meeting. It would be amazing. We've got the lockdown look up daily devotions. We've got a Sunday service coming your way in the morning. Hey, we also have something new Sunday afternoons, an opportunity for a Zoom hangout with myself and some of the other pastors to engage around the sermon. Uh, more details will be in the service stream at the end of the Sunday service. But I just want to encourage you to remain prayerfully engaged in what we are going through in the present, uh, but with this eternal perspective of hope, keeping us hopeful, keeping us faithful. May God be with you until we see each other again.